Four months later, I went back to NHL 22 to see how different the game is from NHL 23 and if we even took a step forward. In this video, I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of face scans, gameplay, and franchise mode. Both game footages are filmed on PS5, but NHL 22 is the PS4 version of the game. Something that sticks out immediately is the game menu. NHL 23 is footage from the trailer with Sarah Nurse and Zekers, whereas the NHL 22 menu has real-life highlights showcasing X-Factors and superstar abilities. Without a doubt, the overall aesthetic of the old menu looks much better. EA should be building on everything from previous years, making it better and better. Better. Instead, we get the opposite with copy and paste footage from the gameplay trailer. So as far as the menu goes, NHL 22 wins that. Next, let's look at player models and face scans. Seegers gets a complete overhaul and damn, his new model looks fantastic. I expected nothing less for EA's poster boy. As long as they keep doing this with all high profile rookies by year one or year two, I'd consider it a big win. Kale McCarr has taken over the league and his player model takes a step forward as well. You can see the shadows and detail on his face making it look much more realistic than 22. Nathan McKinnon gets the same treatment making his NHL 23 model look much less cartoony if that makes sense. Each year it gets more difficult to improve on graphics but I'm impressed to say the least. Connor McDavid also gets a big buff in lighting and texture to his face. They fixed his eyes from his 22 model something I hadn't noticed before. Not sure why they look pride open but I really like his new model. Sidney Crosby has been in the league for 18 years, so not a crazy difference with his face scan. New shadows and lighting have been added, making it look much more realistic. W for the three-time cup champ. Alexander Ovechkin probably looks the most identical with minor tweaks to lighting, but other than that, he remains pretty much the same. I've always thought Ovi has looked fairly realistic in Chell, likely due to his strong Russian genes and Putin allegiance. Austin Matthews, man, put some respect on my boy's name. I don't know if it's just me, but I think his model looks horrible. Here's his player photo from this year. Let me know if you think it's an accurate representation. Now we move on to goalies. Andre Veseleski gets a major buff. He's got the McDavid pervert eyes and look at him glitching when he blinks in 22. I don't know if that's the case for everyone or if my game just bugged loading him in. Should have double checked, but I got too lazy. Igor Shesterkin is one of the top goalies in the league, yet it looks nothing like him. I'm unsure if this is a generic model they're using or if they actually did a face scan, but it's brutal nonetheless. Marc-Andre Fleury, the flower, has a distinct look. Kinda hard to mess this one up, but I'd expect nothing less, so good job EA. Overall, I think we've taken a step up in face scans, player models, and graphics, so that's a W for NHL 23. Next, we'll be looking at some gameplay. This was the hardest part to film, so if you've enjoyed the video so far, drop a like at the end. Here is Mitch Marner, L1 deking down the ice and looking to finish far side. Next, we have the windmill deke. The only thing I noticed was everything was harder in 22, which is a given because we've all gotten used to 23 by now. But I mean, as for playstyle, it is very similar with minor tweaks and changes. Here I attempt to do a fastest skater challenge to showcase the difference in skating. I didn't notice much of a difference though. It seems skating might be a bit faster in NHL 23. Now we move on to franchise mode. First we start with 23. You guys ready? Because I'll be switching to 22 shortly. Boom. There it is. 22. The layout is literally identical. This is super disappointing, especially for offline players. Just change it up a little bit. It can't be that hard. Give us something new to be excited for. Now we will be simming up to trade deadline day, a feature they re-added after taking it away. They have the ability to do so much with this. I think trade deadline day is one of the most exciting days of the NHL season, yet of course EA fails to capture this. Let's see what NHL 22 look like. Unreal. How do they charge $100 for a game like this? Back in NHL 10, which is 13 years ago, we had Blackberries and as your GM rep increased, you earned more phones to make trades with on deadline day. Compare that to now, I don't even know what to say. 
I'll be doing a wishlist video for NHL 24, which will cover some of the changes I think would make the game so much better, so make sure you're subscribed for that. Here I trade Patty Kane for Caulfield in a first. Let me know in the comments who you think would win that trade in real life. Montreal seems to think they've won the trade easily. We skip over the playoffs and head straight to the draft. Another very exciting event in the NHL calendar absolutely diminished by a lack of effort and care. At least in Madden, which is also made by EA, there's some sort of presentation, making it less stale and semi-exciting. It is nowhere near what it should be, but NHL again gets the shorter end of the stick. It's time to wrap this video up because I'm getting angry just filming it. So much potential wasted. Please give the rights to someone who actually cares. So now we head to free agency. NHL 22, the top free agent is Klingberg. Let's offer him a contract. Give him whatever he wants, overpay a little, let's see what he says. NHL 23, exact same thing. Cursor is different, other than that, not a single difference. We pay him what he wants, let's see what happens. He's considering his options, we'll see. NHL 22, Klingberg is extremely happy to accept our offer. We've set him up financially. NHL 23 Klingberg feels we have not offered him what he deserves. Same here EA, the community feels the exact same way. Just for the hell of it, let's look at the playoff tree, here's what EA predicts. Boston goes on to sweep Calgary in the Stanley Cup Finals 4-0 to win the Stanley Cup. Of course they beat Toronto in Game 7 in Round 1. Sorry Leafs fans.